The unpatched V1 version of the Nintendo Switch is perfect for the ultimate game setup. It allows you to add other operating systems such as Android and Linux, which will give you a huge game library. Buying the V1 version is cheaper than a $150 mod chip, especially if you need to hire someone to install it for you. On my Samsung EVO Plus 256GB SD card, I have a triple boot of Android, Ubuntu and SXOS. SXOS is the only firmware that allows you to mount XCI games from an external hard disk drive. The downside is that SXOS is incompatible with games that require above official firmware 11.0.0. It's great that you can save space by mounting on an external storage, but you can only do this with older games. When playing ROMs for the Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, I use MGBA. Leaks have confirmed that Game Boy Advance games are coming to Nintendo Online, but you can already play them right now on your Switch with MGBA. It's a Switch port that launches the games from your custom firmware without having to launch RetroArch and set up cores. For Sega Saturn games, I use the Zebra N found in the Cotton Guardian Force Saturn Tributes. I added my games to the SD card and with Simple Mod Manager I can easily select the Saturn game I want to play and it will start up. If I want to change the game I can just go back to Simple Mod Manager, change the title and it will boot up. For more information on how to set this up you can check out this video. Each game console has a different performance on the Nintendo Switch so by adding Android and Ubuntu you can have the best of two worlds. Switch Root Android turns your Nintendo Switch into a tablet with Google Apps. It gives you the best performance of Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, Nintendo DS, and PlayStation games. When playing Dreamcast games, I use the ReDream app. What's great about it is there's no need to configure the controllers or add BIOS files. You can just add games and go. 96% of the games are playable, and if you unlock the $6 premium, you can play at a 1280 by 960 resolution. For Nintendo 64 games, I use Mupen 64 Plus FZ. On this app, the graphics looks sharper at a 1440 by 1080 resolution. The games have fewer stutterings than other emulators, and by changing the emulation profile, you can make more games run better. Drastic is the best way to play Nintendo DS games because it allows you to use the touchscreen just like you would on a regular DS. Holding the Switch vertically adds more to that authentic DS feeling, and even some games like Zelda Phantom Hourglass can be patched for D-pad controls. Duck Station is the best emulator for PlayStation games. You can upscale to 1080p with 2x multi-sample anti-aliasing. It has a setting called PGXP Corrections, which fixes the wobbled graphics that PlayStation games are known for. More games are playable on this emulator, such as Crusaders of Might and Magic, Hot Wheels Turbo Racing. For more information about playing on Switch Root Android, check out this video. In order to return to Hecate, I'm using Magisk, where I can select Return to Bootloader. L4T Ubuntu Bionic is a version of Linux based on Nvidia's Linux for Tegra project. It allows you to overclock the Switch up to 2.09 GHz, which will make games run at higher speed. Since the game files are rather large, I keep them on my 5TB Seagate portable. On Linux, you can run the Dolphin emulator, which is the best way to play GameCube and Wii games. There are a few Wii games that run well because the Nintendo Switch is using a Tegra X1 chip that's outdated. There are more GameCube games that run well, and there are even some that run at full speed. For more in-depth about what games run well, check out this video. When playing PSP games, I use the PPSSPP emulator on the RetroPie with Emulation Station as a front end. This is the best way to play PSP games since the games can run at higher speed thanks to the overclock and Vulkan backend. It runs even better than PPSSPP standalone on custom firmware. If you want a comparison, you can check out this video. Whenever I want to play newer Switch games, I put in my SanDisk Ultra 128GB SD card. It has Atmosphere on it since SXOS is not supported. I'm really satisfied with the setup. It takes a while to get everything up and running, but when you do, you'll have the ultimate game setup. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or requests, please let me know in the comments below.